What's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCAT, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. As always, we got quite a couple stories to go through, so let's go ahead and get right into this. First things first, Baldur's Gate 3 is officially coming to Xbox. This coming from Lar at Larian on Twitter, quote, Super happy to confirm that after meeting at Xbox P3 yesterday, we found a solution that allows us to bring Baldur's Gate 3 to Xbox players this year still, something we've been working towards for quite some time. All improvements will be there with split-screen co-op on Series X. Series S will not feature split-screen co-op but will also include cross save progression between steam and xbox series which that's actually pretty awesome having cross save between those two i saw and can understand a lot of the disappointment online about no split screen on the series s but the way i see it uh phil spencer even said this in an interview like when you buy the series s you have to understand you're paying almost half the price of what other gamers are paying for the series x so you kind of just have to expect that certain games aren't going to be complete aren't going to have complete parity in their features the series s is more or less just meant to be like a cheap gateway into the next generation rather than than a full-on replacement for the next generation you know what i mean so there's going to be instances like this where games release and whether it be split screen or ray tracing or other features they just they won't always make the cut due to those hardware limitations that being said the rest of the game is still going to be there and i can understand the backlash if this was a thing like halo infinite where split screen is promised and then it just isn't in the game period but rather this is just a feature being cut from series s but let's be honest i'm sure there would be some players that would use split screen here but this is is more like a 100 hour a more like single player type rpg so i compared to something like halo or forza I don't think that this will hurt too many people's feelings, hopefully. Next up, Skater XL is officially coming to Switch. This will be launching December 5th, and you're seeing on the, the trailer on your screen now, I mean, it looks pretty good for a Switch game, and furthermore, it's going to be running at 60 FPS. Yes, even in handheld mode. Both docked and handheld, it'll be running at 60 FPS. It just, oh, it looks so good, and I did end up trying this game. I was talking about it a couple episodes ago when the Turtles thing was coming out about how, like, I dabbled with the game a little bit, didn't play it a whole ton, but... But I've dove back in since then, and man, you know, it is a really good game for like, uh, say you have like a long day at work, or you're just kind of stressed out, you just want to sit down, chill out, skate for a bit, pull off some tricks, it's really good for that kind of scenario, it's just, it's a really nice, mellow, chill out type of game, and it's not necessarily like a Tony Hawk or anything like that either, but it's also not quite too simulation heavy in the same way that like Skate 3 was, it's sort of like a blend of the two, but it's real chill, it's real nice, I highly recommend this one, and hey, it might be worth picking up on the Switch, it, this would be a for game to have on the go. Next up, the From Mission 2 remake release date was announced. This coming from Gamatsu, quote, From Mission 2 remake will launch for Switch via Nintendo eShop on October 5th for $34.99. Publisher Forever Entertainment and developer Stored and Trident announced as if we don't have enough releases in October. This That month is going to be absolutely jam-packed, but hey, my birthday is in October, so it's only fitting, you know. All of these amazing games that I'm looking forward to are just going to be just, thro just thrown my way in my birthday month, and it's also uh, going to drain my wallet but really looking forward to this one next up cs stars released and the reviews went up and man everybody is loving this game so far i really have to dive into this one but anyway right now it's sitting at a 91 on metacritic for the switch an 88 on pc and a 90 on ps5 this is if you don't know what cs stars is it's basically just like a classic 16-bit rpg it's it's it looks so good i really want to play this one like it, it, it's tugging on that nostalgia bone you know what i mean but they also made a post on twitter which really surprised me so this is coming from the cs stars twitter account quote where they say we're speechless thank you heart and a picture below that that says cs stars 100,000 copies sold on day one and you may be wondering why i say that's surprising because you know I, I know a lot of the people that would probably be gravitating towards this game would be like more old school gamers that were around when physical media was still a thing so of course they want to go pick up a physical copy of this new 16-bit jrpg but you have to remember this also came out day one on playstation plus extra and game pass and yet it still sold 100,000 copies on day one so i just think that is awesome um yeah it looks great i really can't wait to dive into this one and when i do i'll definitely let you guys know my thoughts on it because yeah it looks great and it sounds great and the reviews are absolutely fantastic next up just one thing i wanted to highlight real quick if you're watching this video starfield early access is available now so if you pre-order the game you can dive in if not you can either wait till launch day or you know it'll also be coming to game pass so if you have uh, game pass and 
you can just wait till September 6th and then you'll be able to dive in then. But if you did pre-order the game, go ahead, boot it up and play. Next up, I just got a bit of an update on Armored Core 6. So I was talking about, you know, how I really hope that this game does well because Armored Core, it's never been known for the sales. You know what I mean? Like it's never sold the best, but I've always loved the series regardless. I started out with AC3 on the PS2 and then I went on to play Armored Core 4, played a bit of 5, but... Three and four have always kind of been my mains, especially three, because that was the, I mean, I used special place in my heart, you know what I mean? Thir first Armor Core game. But this one um, seems to be selling well so far. So over on Steam, it hit a peak concurrent player count of 156,171 players. And just remember, this was peak concurrent players, like all of them playing at the same time. This doesn't even account for total sales. And this was on Steam alone. This doesn't include PlayStation, Xbox, so yeah, easy to say this will most definitely be the best-selling Armored Core game of all time when it's all said and done. Next up, this one's unfortunate because I was really looking forward to this one, and it was originally going to be right around the corner for now, but now it's being pushed off a bit. Robocop Rogue City has been delayed to November 2nd. They put up a new trailer, and I mean, the game still looks great. I'm still looking forward to it, but I understand September, October, it's really filling up. Things are packed. I'm sure they got a lot of bugs and stuff to do, uh, you know, to work out, so... It is what it is, as I always say, you know, bad game forever bad, good game eventually good, or delayed game eventually good, wherever the saying goes. Does anybody even know what the actual original saying even was at this point? But yeah, still looking forward to this one. Unfortunately, we'll just have to wait a bit longer, but again, I'd rather them take a bit longer than put out a, well, you know, not good game. <laughs> Next up, while we're talking about delays, the Suikoden 1 and 2 remasters were also delayed, and this one really stings. I was really looking forward to this one, but anyway, this posted. Uh, up on Twitter. Notice regarding release schedule for Suikin in 1 and 2 HD remaster, Gate Rune, and Dunin Unification Wars. We would like to thank Suikin and fans everywhere for your ongoing passion and support for the Suikin and series regarding the planned release of Suikin in 1 and 2 HD remaster, Gate Rune, and Dunin Unification Wars. We have reached the conclusion that despite the very best efforts of our dedicated development staff to release the remasters in 2023, additional time is needed to ensure the quality, performance, and gameplay experience our users deserve. The entire Suikin and team is renewed Doing our efforts to bring Suikoden in 1 and 2 HD remaster to release as soon as is possible. We will share further release information as soon as it becomes available on our on our official social media accounts and official homepage. We appreciate your understanding and sincerely hope you will continue to lend Suikoden in your support. Thank you, the Suikoden in 1 and 2 HD remaster gate ruin and Dune Unification Wars team. Again, this is really unfortunate. I was really looking forward to this one. I love the Suikoden in games, but bad game forever bad, delayed game eventually good. Next up, just something I wanted to highlight real quick. There was a Super Mario Bros. Wonder Nintendo Direct that took place. It was only like 15 minutes long, but they showcased a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to talk about it here just in case anybody's, you know, looking forward to it. You know, for me personally, I did not watch too much of the Direct. I saw a couple snippets of it, but I want to go into this game as blind as possible just because I love 2D Mario games and we haven't had one in like 11 years at this point. Um, so yeah, I did not watch too much of it. However, I did see a couple clips. The power ups look pretty cool. So it's there if you want to see it, but if you're like me, you want to go in as blind as possible, just experience the gameplay and the surprises fresh for the first first time then maybe stay away from it but i will warn you there's gonna there's gonna be clips and screenshots all over social media what am i saying there already is oh and they also announced a new nintendo switch it's like it's all red it looks pretty cool but i feel like they could have maybe gone a bit crazy or gone a bit wackier this is super mario bros wonder after all but man, it still looks decent next up just wanted to highlight this real quick but the analog pocket glow in the dark was revealed that's coming from analog on twitter quote introducing analog pocket glow in the dark available in highly limited quantities it's going to cost 249.99 and it will be on sale september 1st 8 a.m pdt and will be shipping september 5th 8 a.m pdt see more info at analog.com so yeah uh if you don't know what the analog pocket is it's essentially uh like a hand Handheld emulator lets you play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and Game Gear. Uh, it's a pretty cool little emulator. I personally do not have one, and I can't say I'll be picking this one up just because... $249.99, I'm sorry, but I just, I don't have the money to shell out for that. If I want to emulate some Game Boy games, you know, I'll just, I'll pop the Razor Kishis on the side of my phone and boot up, you know, like Pizza Boy or something like that, or Lemuroid. That being said, this still did look pretty cool, and I mean, you're seeing the picture on your screen. Like, it looks cool, but it's just, it's something that I don't necessarily have the money to throw at right now. Next up, we got an update for Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. This coming from Nintendo on Twitter, quote, want to get some serious air, race across 20 tracks, and set the 
the Daredevil inside you free in Excite Bike 64 coming to Nintendo Switch for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members on August 30th. Hashtag Nintendo 64, which means by the time you guys are seeing this, or even at the time that I'm recording this, it's already available because it went up on Wednesday. So yeah, I did not get to dive in and play this one yet. However, you know, th this is one of those like old school classic favorites for me, you know, a lot of nostalgia for the game. So I am looking forward to getting on and playing it again, reliving some nostalgic memories. But if you've never played it before, beyond the nostalgia, it's just, it's simply a fun game. So I highly recommend it. Next up, we got the PS Plus Essential Games for the month of September. Are you guys ready for this? Saints Row 2022. <laughs> That's not a joke. I'm not messing with you guys. Saints Row 2022. Now, you know, there's a lot of people that don't really like this game. For me personally, I'm going to be honest. I love Saints Row 2022. I thought it was a great game. I, I didn't even realize that the game got a lot of hate until after I beat it and then looked up like reviews and just to see what other people were thinking of the game. I was like, oh, people actually hated this. Like, I loved it. I had a lot of fun with it, but yeah, yeah. And, and when we talk about the things that we have to talk about, even, you know, after this story, it'll, it'll make sense why this just stings all the more. But the other two games are Black Desert Traveler Edition and Generation Zero. So, you know, Black Desert, that's a cool MMO, Generation Generation Zero. That game, I, I will say this much, that is actually a pretty solid game and it did fly below the radar unfortunately because uh, granted there was some elements in the game that I felt like could have been developed out a bit further. Like that, I'm not talking about the game quality wise, I just rather there's like certain systems in the game that I feel like could have been fleshed out a bit more. It's one of those situations. It's a fun game and I do recommend it. Uh, not necessarily something that's, you know, gonna be like a 10 out of 10 knock your socks off, but it is still a lot of fun, and it did fly below, below the radar. Uh, from what I can tell, it kind of also, it, it, just when you're playing it, between the feel of it, and just, you know, how everything comes together, it seems like it might have been more of like a double A project, I may be wrong about that, but it seems like the budget might have not been as big as they may do, might have needed to flesh things out to the extent that they needed to, but again, I do recommend it. And for our last story, in the same blog post that they announced the PS Plus Essential Game, in they dropped this bombshell of news and again so first they revealed that saints row 2022 is going to be part of the ps plus essential lineups for the month of september and then right below that they slap you in the face even harder it, you know you get slapped in the face by saints row you know you get slapped you feel it you're like oh wow that hurt but they slapped it but then this bombshell right here it slaps it slots every PS Plus member of the face so hard that it literally made them do a whole 360. This coming from PlayStation Blog, quote, we also wanted to let you know that starting September 6th, so literally like not even a week from now, we will be <laughs> the, the same date that Starfield launches, by the way. So rather than paying for these inflated prices, how about you just go pay for Game Pass and try out Starfield? Because I'm done. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. Anyway, uh, starting September 6th, we'll be increasing the price for PlayStation Plus 12 month subscriptions globally across all benefit plans. This price adjustment will enable us to continue bringing high quality games and value added benefits to your PlayStation Plus subscription services. Before we go over the prices, just remember, this does not affect monthly or tri-monthly, I guess it would be called, because there's an option where you pay every three months. This does not affect those. So the monthly and tri-monthly plans, those will be the same. This only affects annual plans, which sucks because I only pay for annual plans outside of Game Pass, obviously, because they only do like uh, monthly plans. But you know, any chance I get, I, I do annual plans because they usually save you money. But now this is I mean, sure, I'm technically still saving money because I do have the PS Plus Premium, but like barely. I'm literally only saving $20 now. But anyway, here are the new prices for PlayStation Plus 12-month subscription plans. PS Plus Essential 12-month subscription, $79.99 USD, $71.99 Euro, $59.99 GBP, or 6,800 yen. For PS Plus Extra, $134.99 USD, $125.99 Euro, $99.99 GBP, 11,700 yen. PS Plus Premium 12 month subscription, 159.99 USD, 151.99 Euro, 119.99 GBP, and 13,900 yen. And then below that it says the new prices for the 12 month subscription will remain at a discounted rate when compared to purchasing the 1 month or 3 month subscriptions over a 12 month period. For current 12 month subscribers, this price increase will not take effect until your next renewal date that occurs on or after November 6th. However, any membership changes you make on or after September 6th, such as upgrades, downgrades, or buying additional time, will update your plan reflecting the new prices. You can change or cancel your subscription at any time. Details here. We'll notify current subscribers of these changes via email and we'll have have additional details on our website soon end quote so if you want to slap your entire fan base in the face well this is the way to do it just increase your prices to an outlandishly egregious degree because mind you 
PS Plus Premium for a monthly plan costs $18 a month. Now, if you pay for the annual version, you will be paying $159.99. And if you do the math, if you would just pay for an annual plan, or if you would just pay every single month for a year of PS Plus Premium, uh, you would be paying $179.99. However, if you pay for the 12-month version, you're paying $159.99. You're only saving $20. <laughs> that is egregious, okay? Before, before, because the the, the, one, the one that I've been paying for, it's $119.99. So I'm saving $60 by buying it that way. And I would understand if they raised it maybe a little bit. So then instead of saving like $60, maybe it was like $30 or $40 instead. They raise it up to, I don't know, like $139.99 or $149.99. But no, they're going all the way up to $160. To be fair. At this current point in time, the only way to pay for Xbox Game Pass, there is no annual plan. You have to do it monthly, and you have to pay $14.99 every single month. At least that is for now until they update the pricing, which I, I honestly, I don't know if they did that already or I forget. I know we talked about it on the show a couple episodes ago, but I believe they're going to be updating that soon where uh, you'll be paying every month. I, I think it's like $16.99 now, so it's only 2 bucks more, but even still. At this current point in time, when you pay every single month for a year for Xbox Game Pass, it costs $180. And once the change takes effect, what that'll be like a maybe closer to 200 but you gotta remember uh, you know despite the you know varying game libraries you know it, it's one of those things where you got to kind of pick and choose like which library of games you prefer whether you prefer the one on ps plus extra or you prefer the game well the ones on game pass you gotta remember that game pass gets like day one releases they're gonna be acquiring activision they're gonna have all these games so i would argue that when it comes to value especially because of those day one releases like for things like halo infinite starfield the new forza motorsport like, there was so much value there for Game Pass, and now Sony is getting really close to those prices, and they're not... Uh, again, like, for a 12-month subscription to PS Plus Extra, it's only going to be $134.99, but then PS Plus Premium, that's the one that I really want to focus on here. $159.99? For what? There's not that much extra there. Uh, their Classics Catalog, which is literally, like, 20 games, 30 games, maybe, something like that, that they have been very slowly upgrading. See, if this would have been a thing where maybe they surprise-dropped native PS3 emulation... Just, just like that, and a bunch of PS2 games. All right, soften the blow. I'm cool with that. But this? <laughs> Honestly, I don't even want to go in anymore. I mean, you guys understand why this is bogus, right? Like, this is stupid. Sony, I don't know what you're doing. I love PlayStation, okay? I've grown up. I grew up with PlayStation, like PS2 specifically. I've always loved PlayStation. I mean, I don't have a bias with consoles, okay? I have all the consoles. I, I play all of them. But that being said, I do love PlayStation. Like, I love all my consoles. But that being said, this is a pretty big anti-consumer move, man. I still love Sony. I still love you guys. You guys make some great first-party exclusives and such, but... Oh, man, some of your business practices and things you do, I swear. <laughs> and anyway, that's all the stories I got for you guys this week. Now, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts on everything we talked about? Whether it's PS Plus raising their prices, are you hopping into Starfield playing the early access? Are you going to be picking up the uh, analog pocket by any chance? Are you excited for Super Mario Bros. Wonder? Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever you're thinking, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. But anyway, this is Weekly GCAP. New episodes go live every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you want to catch them as soon as you go live, well, then I know when to be here. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.